Okay, let's start the recording. Yes, here we go. Uh, good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, today, can you believe it? It's the first Sunday in March, and our college students have been attending our virtual conference this weekend with the theme of wrestling with God. And, and you know, many of you may be wrestling with God, especially through this pandemic. And, and our lives are indeed a, a series of wrestling with different things, right? Including God. Um, I've been reading this book entitled A Long Obedience in the Same Direction by Eugene Peterson. And in it, he describes our journey of faith, our wrestling as he goes through the songs of ascent in Psalms uh, 120 to 134. These songs were sung by Jews at least three times a year as they went up, traveled up to Jerusalem to worship God there. Peterson says we are on a journey of faith, right? We're, we are in a long uh, obedience in the same direction as we head toward Jerusalem. Remember, we've been saying Jesus too uh, set his face to go to Jerusalem. Jesus and too would have uh, sung these songs as he went up to Jerusalem, songs of ascent. So our call to worship passage comes to us from Psalm 122 verses 1 to 4. Let's go there. Psalm 122, verses 1 through 4. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing with your gates, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem built as a city that is bound firmly together, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. Look at verse 1. It says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I know that it can be a struggle to worship God sometimes, and especially during the pandemic. It's just harder to focus, harder to really uh, enjoy, harder to participate. But we need to fight, right? We need to fight so that worship is a part of that long obedience in the same direction. This psalm encourages us to remember the privileges of coming to God in worship, right? It encourages us also to encourage one another by saying, let's go to God together in worship. You know, because they heard people saying to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So, you know what, our response during this pandemic should be to encourage one another and say, hey, let's go to God together to worship Him. It also encourages us to come to God and give thanks. That's the purpose, why, one of the purposes for which we come, right? To come and to give thanks. Yes, even in the midst of pandemic, even in the midst of difficulties that you're going through, even in the uh, struggles and the wrestlings that you're going through, yes, give thanks to God. As your pastor this morning, uh, let me encourage you. Let's come to God together to worship Him and to give Him thanks. Let's pray. Father, we come before you today to give you praise, to give you our worship. Lord, may, may it be our testimony together uh, to say, I was glad when they said to me, let us go up to the house of the Lord. Lord, may we encourage one another, Lord God, uh, during this pandemic, as things get more difficult for many people to persevere in worshiping. Lord, help us to encourage one another to worship. And Lord, may your spirit work in our midst to desire, Father God, to worship you and honor you because there's so many things to give you thanks, Father God, during, yes, especially during this time for the ways in which you have poured out your grace upon us. Lord, this morning as we gather, be exalted. As we praise you, may our hearts praise you. Father, may we give you worship that you deserve because you are, you are our God. You are the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. You are creator of heaven and earth. Father, be exalted in our midst today. We pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. I know. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I 
traveling My shame is taken away My pain is healed in His name I believe I believe And I'll raise And I'll raise a banner my Lord has conquered the grave, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives. Sing, I know, and I know. I believe My shame is taken away My pain is healed in His name I believe I believe And I'll raise a banner oh, My Lord has conquered the grave My redeemed Dancing on this mountain top to see your kingdom come. My Redeemer lives. 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 I have not much. I have not much to offer you. Not near what you deserve. But still I come because your cause has placed in me my. Oh Christ, my King of sympathy, whose wounds secure at peace. Your grace extends to call me friend, your mercy sets me free. And I Explain this kind of love. 
God is able. God is able. He will never fail. He is almighty God. Greater than all we see. Greater than all we ask. He has done God is with us. God is with us. God is on our side. He will make the way. Far above all we know. Far above all we know. He has done great. Oh, he defeated 
the grave. Praise to life, heart God is able in His name. We overcome for the Lord. Our God is able. God is with. for us He has opened us He will never fail us He will never fail us Lift it up He defeated the grave Raised to life Our God is a Uh, dear God, truly, uh, we come before you today to just truly celebrate this, God. Um, God, that you are a God that is so powerful, God, that is so holy, God, that is so beautiful. Um, God, that you are able to do all these things, God. To, God, be able to give us um, anything that we see, God, and more. God, and tr you truly, you know us, God, um, even more than we do ourselves. God, that you are able to provide us, God, um, every day, God, with your mercies and with your grace, God. So, God, we truly come before you, God, to celebrate that, um, that even though you, um, a, tr a holy God that is perfect, um, that you came down, um, that you sent your son um, to truly die for sinners like us, God, we come here before you today um, to celebrate that, to, to give you glory and to lift up your name. Oh my God, as we uh, just come here before uh, before you this Sabbath day, God, would you uh, truly prepare our hearts, um, our ears, our minds, God, for the uh, message that you have before us today that uh, will be delivered by your pastor, uh, that your servant, Pastor uh, Pastor Lee. And God, would you just be with him? Would you fill him with um, grace, God? Would you fill him with your mercy, God, um, that he would just be able to deliver your message today? Um, thank you once again for this time. I'm just going to pray. Amen. 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 Now we enter into a time of confession of our sins. And um, in order for us to desire this long obedience in the same direction as I talked about, in order for us to desire or even set our face to go up to Jerusalem, Eugene Peterson tells us uh, we need to be disgusted with what sin has done to the world. We need to be disgusted with sin, not just out there, but in us so that we would set out on a lifelong obedience in the same direction. The Westminster Confession of Faith reminds us that our sanctification is a war. Um, I used to describe it as our cooperation or our yielding to the Spirit. Um, but, yeah, this language is powerful. It's a war, right? It's a battle. It's a spiritual battle against sin. And... This long obedience in the same direction, the journey of discipleship following Christ, begins with repentance, being disgusted with my sin and hating that sin, confessing them before God and turning from it, right? 
So let's go to Psalm 120, verses 1 through uh, 5 through 7. Psalm 120, 5 through 7. It's an interesting section, if you will. Uh, read. This is the first song of ascent in the book of Psalms. And it says this uh, in verse 5. Woe to me that I sojourn in Meshach, that I dwell among the tents of Kedar. Too long have I had my dwelling among those who hate peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. <laughs> Isn't that very interesting? In this very first song of the ascent, the psalmist mourns the fact that he is among the people of Meshach and Kedar, people who love war and sin, right? He is hating it. He's despising, despise, despising it. He wants to be in the world, but not of the world. But so often we have fallen in love with the world. Isn't that true, right? We were in Meshach and Kedar, and we love the things of Meshach and Kedar. And we love the sin that comes along. And you know what? They, the sinful world, means war against us. And yet we give ourselves into it so easily. The ascent toward Jerusalem, a long obedience in the same direction, begins with repentance brothers and sisters. It begins with being disgusted with sin, hating sin, confessing that and turning from it into a life of new obedience and continuing to fight uh, this war against sin. So let's repent. Let's spend time now coming before God, repenting of how we love sin. And let's repent of that and ask the Lord to forgive us. The assurance of pardon passage comes to us from Luke 9, 51. When the days drew near for him to be beat, taken away, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. <laughs> Our only hope for forgiveness lies in the fact that Jesus lived a life of a long obedience in the same direction. He set his face to go to Jerusalem, knowing that meant certain death on our behalf. We're forgiven of our sins and enabled to set our face to go to Jerusalem too because of what Jesus has done. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Father, for what Jesus has done for us. That we have forgiveness because of him. Father, forgive us because we love sin. We live in the midst of sin. It's battling against us, those who believe, and yet we, are, we, <laughs> we give in to sin so easily without fighting a war against sin but thank you father god that jesus was on uh, was on a a long obedience father god, in the same direction he set his face to to go to jerusalem so that he would be crucified on our behalf he set his face toward jerusalem knowing that for certain that he would die for us thank you father for forgiveness that we have in jesus christ and we pray that we would Lord, be on this journey of a long obedience in the same direction, that we would be on a war against sin. Thank you so much for this beautiful Sunday you granted us, Lord God. And we pray, Father God, that you would use your servant, um, Pastor Lee E today, to speak the truth to us, Father God, of our battle, <laughs> of our wrestling. And Father, I pray, Father God, that you would continually work through him mightily and trans uh, that you would transform us renew us restore us father we need your work in our midst we need you to do your amazing work in our midst today father and and as we come together father we 
we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are a confessional church, and uh, what that means is we, uh, we believe that a, a confession um, called Westminster Confession of Faith is a great summary of the scriptures, so we subscribe to that. Um, I know Heidelberg Catechism is not one of those things that we subscribe to, but uh, we also believe that it is very consistent. It is a very consistent summary of the word. So we are going over Heidelberg Catechism together. Today we come to question 28. What does it benefit us to know that God has created all things and still upholds them by his providence? Let's read together. We can be patient in adversity, thankful in prosperity, and with a view to the future, we can have a firm confidence in our faithful God and Father that no creature shall separate us from his love for all creatures are all so completely in his hand that without his will, they cannot so much as move. Amen and amen. Uh, I have the wonderful privilege now to introduce to you our speaker. And speaking of providence, you know, I've been reminded of God's providence, how wonderful God's providence is, right? His care and love uh, for us. And how he, you know, how he uh, guides our situations uh, towards his own good ends, right? And one of the wonderful providence uh, providences in my life was meeting Pastor uh, Lee e in Houston. Um, at the end of my stay there, towards the end of my stay there in Houston, after six years there, I was looking for a new position, and um, Pastor Lee e, I'll just call him Pastor Lee for now. Um, said, hey, my church back home in San Diego is looking for an EM pastor. Why don't you apply there? And that's what I did. And <laughs> um, here we are, right? Um, he's the one who introduced me to Hope Church. And uh, he actually was um, a college student at UCST, attended Hope. And uh, some of our older members know him. And he... Uh, he also happened uh, happens to be also, he was a KCM president back then. Our church had a long history with KCM. Uh, he has been a pastor for 17 years. Uh, he's a father of three daughters, right? And uh, he's a graduate of Talbot, and he is currently on a sabbatical. Most recently, he served at Saddleback Church and Ir Irvine Onuri. And uh, yeah, he's not a foodie, but in the way to his heart is to feed him Mexican food, he, he tells us. So, yeah, without further ado, uh, let me introduce to you Pastor Lee Yi, and he will be reading God's word to us and then delivering God's word uh, to us uh, today. Uh, thank you, Pastor Joe. I'm all a little bit uh, embarrassed by your wonderful introduction to me, um, but uh, yeah. I, I, one of the providences of my life was to meet Pastor Joe in Houston as well. It made my difficult time in Houston much, much, much easier, as well as Samani. Um, so uh, I'm so grateful to you. Well, uh, I, I don't have any embarrassing stories about Pastor Joe. I was thinking about it, and I just don't. He's, he's just perfect. I'm not perfect. We are not perfect, but Pastor Joe is perfect. So I don't have anything to share with you on that account. Um, but yes, I uh, just a quick introduction. Um, I was at UCSD, and um, that's how I met my wife, Bora. She was living here in San Diego. And uh, we ended up, I was at Hope serving in the youth ministry from 97 to 04. And then I was called into ministry uh, to Houston in 04 to 07. And that's where I met Pastor Joe. And although Houston, 
um, there were many great things about it, including meeting Pastor Joe, uh, great food, great cost of living. Uh, we couldn't do it because as Californians, the humid weather was just really difficult for us. So we moved back. Um, but I'm just grateful that I've had this opportunity um, to share with my alma mater, if you will, almost in every sense, Hope, KCM, San Diego. Um, and it's so good to recognize some of the names among the participant list. Uh, and um, I just discovered last night, actually, <laughs> that I, I am related to Solomon, Kim. Uh, he and I are cousins. I just found out last night. And in Korean circles, it's, you know, we, you say, you know, it's so small when you're in a Korean church circle. But he is my wife's dad's dad's brother's daughter's son. <laughs> So, yeah, what's up, cuz? You got to call me Hyung now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just discovered that last night. So it, it really brings me joy that after three sessions with them, um, I was waiting for Pastor Joe to say, you know what, Pastor Lee, we don't need you on Sunday. I think we're good. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm really grateful for this opportunity. Well, let's get into the word. Today we're going to look at Philippians 4, 4 through 7. This is actually my life first, and, and it, it's interesting that my life has now come kind of full circle because this was a verse that my, um, and KCM, we had something called Intensive Bible Study Group. It was about six of us young men, young freshman college students meeting with our Bible study leader, and he had us memorize verses uh, every week. And if, whenever we didn't remember a verse, we put quarters in a jar, I think something like that. And I said, what, what are we gonna do with the quarters in the jar? And uh, we'll, we'll go buy chicken wings or something. So <laughs> I was like, wait, are we getting punished for not remembering the verses? But anyways, one of the verses that we, that became my life verse was out of Philippians 4, 4 to 7. So with that, let us read the word of God. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, Rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, this... Um, you know, I'm sure some of you are looking at my name on the screen and you're confused. Wait, which one's his last name? In fact, Solomon was doing that all weekend, like Pastor Yi. <laughs> like he wasn't sure which one he should address me as. Even Pastor Joe did it earlier, right? I'm just going to call him Pastor Lee, which is fine. You can call me Pastor Lee, Pastor Yi, whatever, Pastor Dude. Um, but this is something that I grew up struggling with, I guess, if we're going to talk about struggles. Um, I used to work at Kia here in Irvine, the headquarters, and everyone had trouble with my name. The Koreans had trouble with my names. The Americans had trouble with my names. And I remember my boss's boss, he knew my first name was Lee. He, Lee, 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 Lee. But we were in a meeting once, and someone from a different department didn't know that was my first name and called me Yi in that meeting. And my, I could see on his face, have I been saying it wrong this whole time? And from that point forward, he started calling me Yi. <laughs> Because <laughs> he thought he was wrong when he was right. Um, and so people ask, why do you have two last names? Well, uh, I guess I share something with someone historically in Hope as well. If you remember Matthew 4, uh, he had the name 4. Because what is that? Is that a Korean last name? 4? I don't know a Korean last name 4. It's because he was adopted, right? My father was adopted by a US military soldier while he was in Korea and brought him over to America. And his, his, my dad's name became Sung Jung Lee Neeland. And when I was born, he wanted his family name and my name. So he, I was born uh, Lee Neeland. Uh, but then when I got into high school, my dad said, you know, I don't like that Neeland name. And my wife gets funny looks when people see her name is Yoon Neeland. So I wanna go back to my family name. So he decided he wanted to go back to Song Jung, not Lee, Yi. And then my name became Lee Yi. And you can imagine I was going from junior high to senior high and my friends are like, what do you mean your name's Lee Yi? You're Lee Nealon. <laughs> but I became Lee Yi, or as some Koreans say, E-E. Um, you know, 
my actual Korean name is uh, Lee Changun, right? General Lee. So like the Dukes of Hazard, I was also General Lee. Uh, growing up in elementary school, kids would call me Bruce Lee, right? And they thought because my name was Bruce Lee, the nickname they'd given me, they would come and fight me, like they would beat me up. And this was before my parents, you know, like all parents enrolled me in Taekwondo. So I was always getting beat up. But thank you, God, that in my elementary school, there was one other guy named Lee. He was this tall, tall, tall for elementary school, Caucasian guy. And when he learned that we had the same first name, he became my best friend. <laughs> And so whenever these guys would come to try to fight with Bruce Lee, he would walk over <laughs> and they would walk away. Right? I was so glad that God sent Big Lee in my life, right? Uh, it helped my elementary struggles so that I got beat up less. As you may or may not know, the theme for this weekend was wrestling with God, as is the sermon title for the weekend, uh, for today. And over the three sessions, we asked the questions, what does the phrase mean, wrestling with God? What does, what does it look like generally and in our present circumstances, right? We're in COVID or in our work or in our school. What does that look like? And, and then how do we handle it or respond to it? And the final question we had to ask, well, is wrestling with God disobedience? Is it bad if we wrestle with God, right? So we answer those questions by looking at three people who wrestle with God and with others. What was their struggle? How did they overcome? And as we'll see today, one of the things that we must learn is that we must move from wrestling with God to wrestling with God. <laughs> what do you mean, Pastor Lee? Wrestle We've got to move from wrestling with God to wrestling with God. It's the problem with the limitation of our English language and grammar. These conjunctions with can meet them different things. So let me let me help you guys. We must move from wrestling with against God to wrestling with alongside God, as you see there on the screen. So that makes sense, more sense, right? Okay. So before we get into it, let's take a moment to pray and kind of prepare our hearts for, for uh, what God has to teach us today. Heavenly Father, we have all experienced these wrestling moments in life and whether we realize it or not as we wrestle with others as we wrestle with ourselves as we we also wrestle with you um whether we mean to or not and <clears throat> lord i pray that as we recognize the wrestle in life the struggle in life that today we'll at least get some baby steps towards how we can overcome and prevail and experience victory and success uh, in the wrestling that we experience in life. Please use me, God. May your Holy Spirit help me to use the words that I need to use, and may your Holy Spirit eliminate the words that I don't need to speak. And uh, I pray that you would open up hearts and minds and ears. I know today, this morning, people are going through struggles, depression, anger, bitterness, and we some of us don't want to be here, but I pray that your Holy Spirit will somehow help us to overcome that wrestle and that struggle so that we can hear you clearly this morning. Uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So the first person that we looked at was Jacob. And, and that's our first kind of outline point, wrestling with Jacob. In Genesis 32, we looked at the story of Jacob and his wrestling match in the wilderness with what the Bible says is a man. Or as Hosea says, an angel. Actually, Hosea says Jacob actually wrestled with God. What we learn from Jacob is that we must move from selfishness to selflessness, from struggle to service. If you want to get past your struggle in life, then move away from yourself and to serve God and you will get past your struggle. All his life, he lived up to his name. His name meant what? the one who grabs the heel or the one who tricks <laughs> and i know koreans love to name their kids um bible names right I, i'm just gonna go down this list solomon right uh joe 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 sam joe 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 right philip nathan right all these bible names mark but i don't know if, how many korean parents realize they're naming their kid jacob uh, the trickster, the, the cheater, the, 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 the one who grabs the heel, right? 
J if there's any Jacobs in the room, I don't, I mean, no offense. Jacob's a great name, uh, but that's what his name means. He's the one who lies and cheats and tricks, right? We saw him struggle with his brother from the womb. He tricked him out of a, a birthright and a blessing. We saw him struggle with his father who he deceived his father. We saw him struggle with his uncle, right? They, they struggled for years and, and Jacob was deceived by his uncle Laban and Jacob deceived Laban and back and forth, right? We saw him struggle with his wives, yes plural. He had basically four wives. He struggled with them, right? Uh, I never struggle with my wife, right? And my, my wife is here, so she can testify. To, I never struggle, but Jacob struggled with his wives. But it was only after struggling with God and having his name changed to Israel, which means to struggle with God, did he begin to struggle for God. Yes, he struggled with God, as is his namesake, but he ended up becoming someone who struggled for God. What we learn from Jacob is that we must move from looking at ourselves and our situation and our circumstances and what we don't have and, you know, and where we are not. We must move from there to looking to God and living for his glory. And then we move to wrestling with Paul. In Romans 7, we look into Paul's writings. And we assume that by the time he's writing these letters to the churches, right, that he's this seasoned, mature Christian with no struggles, right? But we're wrong because we discover that Paul himself had internal struggles, right? Uh, he, he says, I do what I don't want to do, and I don't do what I want to do. And when I do do what I want to do, 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 don't do, right? Uh, I was sharing with the students, college students, and um, you know, obviously I dated myself. I don't know why Pastor Joe asked such an old guy to speak to such young people. I think I'm double their age now. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be 45 this year. Uh, but I was asking, do you guys know that song by Jermaine Jackson, right? Why don't you do what you do when you did what you did to me? You got anybody raise your hand, older people? You guys know that song? That's the song I think of, right? That's Paul saying, I don't do what I wanna do. I do what I want, I do what I don't wanna do, right? Paul had this internal struggle his, his self. Um, so what we discovered through Paul was that contrary to popular belief, right? What is the belief? When I become a Christian, I'm not going to sin anymore. I'm not going to struggle anymore. I'm going to live the perfect life. I'm going to live the good life. Um, and, and, and everything's good from now on, right? How many of us believe that when we became a Christian, right? That was part of why we wanted to be in that life because we hated our old life, but Contrary to that understanding, when we become a Christian, we struggle, our struggle with sin does not end when we become a Christian. Of all the joys that we experience coming into the Christian life, this is actually one of the disappointments and the rude awakenings. We still experience temptation. We still fall to sin. Why? We thought that was part of the old life. But unfortunately, until we get to heaven, and we remain in these, you know, and, and when we get to heaven, God promises us that our bodies will be transformed. I'm looking forward to that because this body is not, not working out. We remain in this imperfect body, which is still influenced by its, the, the sinful nature, the flesh, the sarks, as it says in the Greek, right? That is part of our struggle, unfortunately. So that, make, that leaves us hopeless, desperate, right? It brings us down like, oh, man, then what's the point, right? But there is a point. If we cannot escape this internal struggle of spiritual versus unspiritual, what hope is there, right? The hope is this, Jesus. Jesus is the one that rescues us from this spiritual battle that we have within. And he empowers us to do the good that we want to do and not do the bad we don't want to do. Jesus helps us do that. When we, before we met Christ, we only did that, only did the bad, and we had no idea about the good. But when we became a Christian, our eyes were open and we were able to see, I can do good. And, and the things I was doing was bad. Jesus helped me so that I can do those good things I see I can do. And Jesus helped me not do the things I don't want to do.
Only Jesus can help us. We can't do this on our own. And finally, wrestling with Jesus, we went into Matthew 26. We looked at the life of Jesus. And Jesus, you know, some of you guys are thinking, Pastor Lee, Jesus didn't struggle. That's a heresy. How can you say that? Jesus was perfect, right? But that, that's wrong. The Bible tells us he struggled with temptation. He got tired. Uh, he got, you know, he, he experienced, uh, you know, sickness. He experienced all the things that we experience in our human bodies. And he also experienced temptation, right? Just as we do. Because, as we know, he was fully God, yet he was fully man. And as fully man, he experienced all we experienced. The difference, though, Yes, he experienced temptation. The difference is because he was fully God, he was able to resist temptation and maintain a perfect life. And this made it possible for him to be the perfect sacrifice on the cross for us, right? So last night we did look at his final moment of struggle in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was praying that the cup of suffering that was before him, that it would be passed from him. He prayed this three times, but in the end, he also said three times, not my will, but thine, God. What we learn from Jesus is that when we are struggling and in the face of suffering, we must pray. It says Jesus fell on his face. We must humble ourselves, submit ourselves to God. We must align our wills with God. And one thing that we may, may or may not realize in this moment is that oftentimes throughout the Gospels, we see Jesus goes away by himself. But in this last moment, he doesn't go away by himself. He brings the disciples along, right? He didn't do it alone. And he sets the example for us that we don't have to struggle or suffer or pray alone. Jesus did it with others. Even though they were sleeping disciples, he decided to involve them in this moment with him. So now, how do we wrap this all up, right? Um, I want to wrap it up by getting into Philippians 4. And I, I know I mentioned that we were looking at 4 through 9, but I'm only, in the interest of time, I'm only going to look at um, verses 6 and 7. Those are my life verses. But what does the verse say? Verse 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. What does Paul mean? Don't be anxious. Don't worry. Brothers and sisters, anxiety and worry are self-centered, right? Just as Jacob was selfish, when we have anxiety and when we worry, I want us to realize how selfish that is. Anxiety is not helpful. Anxiety is not productive, right? How many of you, by being anxious about something, resolve that something, right? That's a 0% success rate. Worry does not solve anything. Anxiety is not productive, right? Like Jesus said in Matthew 6, don't worry about what you'll eat, what you'll drink, what you'll wear, right? Don't worry. Is that like the Bobby McFerrin song? Again, I'm dating myself. Don't worry, be happy. I'm sure the college students at least know this song, the Lion King song, Hakuna Matata. Don't worry, be happy, right? Is that what Jesus is saying? No, it's a, it's a little different. It's a subtle difference, but it's, it's a little different. It's not saying live a carefree or careless life and go live in the jungle and eat bugs and do whatever you want, right? No, Jesus and Paul are saying, don't, don't over stress about everything. Don't make these things that you worry about and you're anxious about and you have your doubts and fears, don't let them become idols that rule over you, right? I think a better song, somebody needs to write it, maybe someone on the Hope Praise team, not Don't Worry, Be Happy, but Why Worry When You Can Pray. That'd be a great song, right? Why Worry When You Can Pray. If you ever find yourself worrying, just sing that to yourself. Why Worry When I Can Pray? I don't know what the melody will be, but just ask that question. Why Worry When I Can Pray? Paul says, don't be anxious, rather, in everything, by prayer and supplication, right? What is he saying? Just give it up to God. The 
Do you want to know what the antidote, if worry and anxiety are a poison, what is the antidote? The antidote to worry, anxiety, doubt, fear is prayer. If you are worried about something, pray. Then just give it up to God. Let it go, right? There's another Disney song, <laughs> Frozen. Let it go, right? Go into the unknown, whatever. <laughs> when you pray to God, what you're saying is, you know God, uh, you know, I know God, you are powerful enough to hear this prayer and answer this prayer. You can handle it. You see how that's different from worry? Worry is, God, you can't handle this. I know you did all these things, but you can't handle this. Well, prayer is, God, I know you can handle this. That's the difference. And this is the most important part, uh, not the most, but this is an important aspect of your prayer as well. With thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is another antidote to worry, right? It's hard to be self-centered and worry when you are thinking about all the wonderful, good and perfect gifts God has given you. And when you think about all that God has already done for you, right? When when my when my girls are complaining to me, dad, mom, complain, 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 groan, moan, um, I I I want to stop and pause and say, well, let's count our blessings, right? Then we don't have much to complain about uh, compared to the person down the street or the person across town. There are a lot of things we can be grateful for. Right? They may have the nice car and the nice house and the nice iPhone and the nice computer and the nice AirPod. You know, I'm sorry, I could only get you the basic AirPod and they have the AirPod Pro. I'm such a bad father. But think about all the things we do have that they don't have. You have both mom and dad in the house. Um, you, you know, you kind of, you, you don't have your own rooms, but at least there are two rooms between the three of you. Um, you're always fed always you know and when you want to eat something i get it for you when you want to buy something i try to buy it for you let's count our blessings right this is the conversations we have and this is the conversations we must have god you know instead of going to god ah you know god i don't have this and i want to grumble complain groan moan to you stop yourself pause and say god you know what time out you know what? I'm, I'm thankful for this start all of your prayers with a list of all the things you're thankful for Again, my example at Kia, when I was working there, there was a lady, we had a Bible study at lunch once a week, and she would tell me that every morning before she does anything else, she would email herself 10 things she was grateful for to God. It was an email to God every morning. And then she had one of the worst jobs because she was in accounting. It made her day that much easier, right? It just made that day so much more doable. Just 10 things I'm thankful for, right? Thanksgiving is being grateful for all the ways God has faithfully answered your prayers in the past. Someone said that a sign of Christian maturity is gratitude. And you could say a mature Christian is one that does not worry. And then we get to the peace of God. How is this different than the peace of man? The peace of man is what? Some of you might have grown up in the 70s, put up a peace sign like a hippie, like that's peace, right? What is peace? An empty mind, om, right? Paul's not referring to a psychological peace. He's referring to a supernatural peace that can only be had by those who are in relationship with God. And what else does peace mean in an earthly sense, right? It means the absence of war. Christians have peace because we are no longer at war with God. We are no longer enemies of God. As a friend of God, then, there is nothing to worry about because God takes care of his friends. God takes care of his family. God takes care of his sons and daughters. He always has, he always will. And that's the most important aspect of this piece. I said this to the college students and I will say it to all of you at Hope Church. We were created to be in relationship with God. Sin broke that relationship. But Jesus died so that that broken relationship could be restored and we are now back at peace with God as was intended at creation, right? The Greek word for peace is Irene, from which we get the name Irene. I know there's a lot of Korean girls named Irene. Any Irenes in here? No. Um, but the Hebrew word is Shalom, right? You've heard maybe Jewish people say that, or you've heard even you know people in the church say Shalom. It is inadequate to translate it into English as peace, though. 
right? Just like, do you guys know like some Korean words, there's not really English translation for it, right? Uh, like words like chung and bija and nunchi, like these three words, like how do you translate it in English? The, the, the Hebrew, also there's so many words that have nuances that we can't really capture in English, but let me help you. It means much more than peace in our sense in America. It could be better translated as wholeness, right? When everything is right in the world, everything is right in our relationships with others, everything's right in our relationships with God, we have peace with God, peace with others, we are whole. And this is the experience the believer can only experience, the peace that comes from God. And Paul says here, it surpasses all understanding. It's something we can't understand. It's something we can't wrap our minds around, right? But when you have this peace, it will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, it says here in verse 7. What picture comes up in your mind when you think of the word guard, right? God is, think, think of God guarding you. God is like a soldier, not a soldier. He's like the general of the army guarding you. Doesn't that give you any comfort and peace to your mind and your heart as you think God is guarding you, right? It gives me great sense of peace. His peace, it says here, your hearts and minds will cover your feelings, your affections, your thoughts. Brothers and sisters, worry is a thief. It robs us of joy and peace. Are you not experiencing joy and peace in your life? then you need to grab the thief, grab the robber and kick him out of your house, out of your home because he is robbing you. You know, Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill, destroy. He was referring to Satan. But thieves steal, kill, destroy. Worry, steal, kills, destroy. Worry is something Satan will put in your heart, right? But Jesus said in John 10, 10, I, Jesus, have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Jesus wants you to have a life, not have no life. He wants you to have a full life, an abundant life. And when we worry, we cannot enjoy the life that God has for us or wants for us. I mentioned Matthew 6 earlier. Don't worry about your eat, drinks, wear. But let's look at that verse. 6, 32, 33, 34. For the pagans run after all these things, eat, drink, uh, clothes. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough troubles of its own. Let me paraphrase. Don't worry. This is what the non-believer does. You don't have to worry because you know I'm going to take care of you. Seek God. He will take care of everything else. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just focus on today. Right? Simple trans paraphrase. Right? Let's paraphrase what Paul says. Don't worry. Pray. And then trust God's going to take care of it. That's what Philippians 4, 6, and 7 is saying. When you worry, do you realize you're saying to God, I know, God, you created the universe and you have everything under your control, but this is the one thing I think you're going to miss. I'm just saying, God, I think I know a little bit better than you, right? I, I want all of you to say that out loud to God, okay? Go ahead, repeat after me. You guys don't have to turn your mics on, but just repeat after me this thing. I know you created the universe and you have everything under control. But this is the one thing I think you're going to miss. You said those four clauses. And you're like, Pastor Lee, this is stupid. This is silly. But that's what we're doing when we worry, right? God, you don't got this. Let me, let me, let me try something else, OK? I'm, I'm going to close here. I got two more paragraphs. We're done here. To repeat after me these, OK? God, you are omnipotent. That means you are all powerful. God, you are omniscient. That means you are all knowing. You are omnipresent. That means you are everywhere. You are Lord and King. That means you are sovereign. All of this means you are in control. 
you've got this. Do you see the contrast between those two? You sound silly when I asked you to repeat what I asked you to repeat earlier. But when you repeat what I said afterwards, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, Lord, King, sovereign, you're in control, you've got this. It changes everything, right? It changes what's going on in here, right? The internal struggle and turmoil you're going through. Does it not change that when you just say out loud that thing? When you recognize God, Pastor Joe said, um, you know, that Pastor Lee, may he speak the truth. This is the truth that I need to understand. Don't fall for the lies of your dialogue that comes out in worry, fear, doubt, anxiety. Hold on to the truths that come out when you pray to God and you trust in God. Remember that story I shared about Big Lee? <laughs> How he protected me from the bullies? God is our Big Lee. If we have a bully called worry or anxiety, we just need to go to God and say, God, worry and anxiety are bullying me. Can you make them go away? And like Big Lee, he will make them go away. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word of encouragement and hope and inspiration. Lord, we thank you. Um, this year has been tough. It's almost a year now since we've been under lockdown in the state of California. It's been a tough, tough year in every sense of the word. Families are stressed out. School stresses us out. Work stresses us out. Church, um, which used to be our place of comfort and solace, we can't even meet with one another and, and do that. It's been a tough year. And we've had our share of wrestling. We've had our share of struggles. <sighs> Lord, um, you know, only you know. But Lord, I pray that we would, like Jacob, learn to move from selflessness, selfishness to selfish, selflessness, from struggle to service. I pray like Paul, we will recognize the internal struggle within us, that there is a spiritual uh, versus flesh struggle that we can only overcome by the power of the Holy Spirit and with the power, the same power that resurrected Jesus from the dead. And I pray, Lord Father God, that like Jesus, we would be getting down on our knees, praying, um, and in spite of the suffering ahead of us, that, Lord, we would uh, submit to you and uh, live a life of obedience, uh, long direction in the same, a, a long time in the same direction, Pastor Joe said. And finally, Lord, I pray that in the face of anxiety, worry, doubt, fear, that we would just simply pray to you, give thanks to you, give it all to you, and then trust that you will guard us and that your peace will be over us. And that, Lord Father God, we can have confidence that you are going to take care of it all. And, Lord, you will help us to survive, to prevail, to overcome, to experience the victorious, abundant life that you have ahead of us. We thank you, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor Lee. Uh now we'll respond to the message we heard by singing, It is well with my soul. Sing one piece. When peace like a river Attended my way when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. My soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. 
Sing, and Lord, haste the day. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Amen. Uh, it's not now time for tithes and offering. Uh, you can give online at www.hopecst.org slash give. Um, we respond to God's grace by giving because we're thankful. Let's worship God through our tithes and offerings. At this time, our deaconess, Yajin, will come and pray on our behalf. Let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity this morning to worship you despite and in light of all that is going on in our lives. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom and by whom we are able to approach you in this way. We are also so grateful for the ways that you comfort and shepherd us in our afflictions and the ways that you show compassion to us in our suffering. No matter how far we may feel from you, you gently yet firmly bring us back to yourself. Thank you for restoring our souls and renewing our, your mercies in our lives every single morning. As you begin our weeks, would you increase our faith in you, knowing that you are Yahweh, the creator of this universe, and the great I am. We lift up these tithes and offerings to you, and we thank you for your abundant provision in our lives. We ask that you would help us to be kingdom-minded and utilize all that you have given us in this life for your glory and lift up our bodies as a living sacrifice to you. We also lift up our dear brother and sister, Damon and Young Lee, to you. We ask that you would grant them strength and love as they serve the people of Japan. Help them to fall in love with the gospel message over and over again in the midst of suffering. Would you continue to lift them up when they are down and embrace them in your faithful arms? Thank you so much again for your presence in our lives and for your son, Jesus Christ, in whom we have this relationship with you. It is in his most precious and holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Yajin. Uh, it's now time for announcements. Uh, we want to welcome those of you who have joined us for the first time. Uh, I know this is not an ideal way to, to meet, uh, but uh, we'd like to ask you to go to our website, uh, Hope pcsc.org and click on connect with us so that our welcoming team can reach out to you so that you can get plugged into our ministry. Uh, next, after this, we will have ref uh, reflection time for your edification. We go over the message and reflect on it. And so we're going to encourage you guys to stick around so that um, we can continually be transformed by the gospel. This is a great way to get to know people as well. So please join us for reflection. Next, our live worship continue. Oh, oh, here we go. Um, much thanks for delivering. Uh, well, much thanks to Pastor Lee for delivering God's word to us uh, throughout the weekend. Thank you. Uh, let's thank him. Thank Praise God. Also, we would like to thank all of you who were um, serving to make the college conference uh, possible, including seminar speakers. And we had Justin come and speak, and we had our uh, former um, UCSC students who graduated come and speak. It was such a blessing. So thanks. Thank you to all of you. Thank you, Core and Solomon, for serving. Um, next, uh, well, let me just step back and say, yeah, there are other people who served. Uh, I won't name everybody, but thank you so much for serving to make it happen. Uh, live worship continues via Zoom 
at 10 a.m. Uh, if you cannot join us for 10 a.m. service, uh, our recordings are available on our YouTube channel. Again, much thanks to our uh, serving to make it all happen. Right after this, also we have um, at 11.30 youth uh, sermon and then Sparks uh, Ministry uh, worship for our kids. Parents, please uh, help them log on so that they can worship together with other kids, other spark kids of our church. Um, Lord willing, and it, it is looking positive now that we will move out of the purple tier, but Lord willing, uh, we will gather outside the gathering to worship and celebrate uh, the Lord's Supper on the last Sunday uh, in March. Okay, next. In light of uh, Easter, we want we ask of you to participate in the following things. Uh, first is a a collage of prayer and uh, images uh, that we're asking you to do uh, as we enter into Easter. This, we're calling this Litany of Hope. Please sign up uh, to participate on respective Facebook groups. Next. Um, I am. I will be uh, doing virtual visitation. I'll continue uh, doing virtual visitations, and uh, you know it's been a great uh, way to get to meet people and get to know them, what their struggles are, and to uh, to pray for them. So I want to encourage you guys. If you haven't, please sign up on Facebook groups. And going back to uh, speaking of Easter, how we can serve as we approach Easter, Passion Week, and Easter. Join us um, March 20th, right, uh, for cleanup and yard work in support of women's rehab, uh, rehabilitation home. You can speak to Elder Mark or Hannah for more information next. Again, speaking of Easter, uh, we are per per partnering with Hope for San Diego to make and distribute care packages to previously homeless families. So again, contact Hannah um, if you want more information on this. All right. Um, for this, can I ask you guys to turn on your videos? Let's all turn on our videos to sing the doxology together. I won't ask you to stand because I can't stand right now. But uh, let's all stand to, oh, well, no, if you can, but um, let's sing this doxology together. I want to ask you guys to turn on your videos, please. Okay, and let's sing this together. Okay, let me see if I can see your faces. Okay, there we go. Okay. Yes, turn on your videos, please. All right, beautiful. Wonderful to see you guys. Let's sing together the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Now receive the blessings from the Lord. As, as Pastor Lee shared about Shalom. Let's uh, pray a blessing of Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you Shalom. Amen. All right, go in peace, everyone. Please join us for our reflection groups. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>